two days before the time trial which could prove a decisive moment in the 101st Giro d'Italia, Simon Yates took his third stage victory of the race at the Sapido Ski Resort on Sunday, extending his overall lead over the defending champion, Tom Dumoulin, beyond the two-minute barrier. It was a massive step towards what could be a first British win in the Giro while the race favourite, Chris Froome, flopped badly following his stage victory on Saturday, with the overall win slipping further out of reach. With two short sharp climbs in the final kilometres and a further ascent to the finish, this stage finish favoured Yates' punchy, attacking style more than the relentlessly steep slopes of Saturday's finish on Monte Zoncolan. He made two incisive attacks in rapid succession at the foot of the penultimate ascent, Costa The first pulled an elite group of half a dozen clear of the remnants of the lead peloton and the second took him clear for good. It was a bit of instinct, Yates said, and it was a similar move to attacks that gave him stage wins at the Vuelta a España in 2016 and Paris Nice the following year. When we came off the descent I saw there was a little gap to a few guys, so I asked Jack, Harg, to push up the pace, then George, Bennett, attacked. It was really hard from the bottom of the climb but I felt good, so I chose the moment to go. I'm a bit emotional because I gave it everything the second time to get away and it worked. I think it was the hardest 15 kilometers of my life. Yates decided to press on immediately after the rapid, chilly descent from the Paso di Sant'Antonio, which led straight up onto Costalicio without giving the riders a pause to gather breath or stretch the legs. Froome was already floundering a little way behind as Yates's teammate Haig increased the pace, prompting the New Zealander Bennett to make a brief unsuccessful attack. When the pink jersey had flown, Dumoulin was left in the company of four other contenders for the podium, Domenico Pozzovivo, Miguel Angel Lopez, Richard Carapaz, and Thibaut Pino. Only the Frenchman Pino was willing to collaborate consistently with the Dutchman Dumoulin, who could be seen gesticulating at the quartet in an attempt to make them cooperate. Dumoulin was briefly dislodged by his four companions on the final ascent to the ski resort but regained contact when they began marking each other with their minds on the time bonuses awarded for second and third places behind Yates, whose stage victory looked assured from the moment he went past the 5 km to go mark with 51 seconds in hand. The Dutchman ended the stage third, just behind Lopez, but his loss of 47 seconds to Yates, including bonuses, extended his deficit to 2 minutes 11 seconds. Quick Guide Stage 15, Tolmezzo, Sapido 176 km, 1 Simon Yates. G. Br Mitchelton Scott 4 hours 37 minutes 56 seconds, 2 Miguel Angel Lopez, Col, Astana Pro Team at 41s, 3 Tom Dumoulin, Ned, Team Sunweb, 4 Domenico Pozzovivo, Eater, Bahrain Merida, 5 Richard Carapaz, Agu, Movistar Team, 6 Tebo Pino, Fra, Group Armour FDJ all at same time, 7 Alexandra Genies, Fra, AG2 Alarm Mondial at 1 minute 20 seconds, 8 Davide Formolo, Eater, Bora Hansgro, 9 Pelo Bilbao, Spa, a standard pro team, 10 Sam Uman, Ned, Team Sunweb all that same time general classification after stage 15 1 Simon Yates, G. Br Mitchelton Scott 65 hours 57 minutes 37 seconds, 2 Tom Dumoulin, Ned, Team Sunweb at 2 minutes 11 seconds, 3 Domenico Pozzovivo, Ita, Bahrain Merida at 2 minutes 28 seconds, 4 Thibaut Pino, Fra, Group Armour FDJ at 2 minutes 37 seconds, 5 Miguel Angel Lopez, 
Nicole, a standard pro team at 4 minutes 27 seconds, 6 Richard Carapaz, AQ, Movistar team at same time, 7 Chris Froome, G team Sky at 4 minutes 52 seconds, 8 George Bennett, NZL, Lotto NL Jumbo at 5 minutes 34 seconds, 9 Pelo Bilbao, Spa, a standard pro team at 5 minutes 59 seconds, 10 Patrick Conrad, out. Bora hands grow at 6 minutes 13 seconds thank you for your feedback. As for Froome, Yates had failed to overhaul the team Sky leader in the final kilometers up Montes on Colon the previous day but 24 hours later Froome looked as if he had not recovered from that monumental stage winning effort. At the finish the four times Tour de France winner had dropped from 5th overall to 7th but he is now 4 minutes 52 seconds behind Yates, suggesting even a place on the podium may be out of reach. There are only 6 contenders for the podium in Rome on Sunday, 7 counting Froome, and Yates's stage victory puts him on a par with Eddie Merckx and the Italian Gilberto Simoni, the only others to have taken 3 stage wins while wearing the pink jersey. Those are not the key statistics for the Berry cyclist entering the final week, however. Dumoulin may well wipe out most if not all of that 2 minutes 11 seconds in Tuesday's tomorrow's time trial. He is the world champion of the discipline and the flat course will favor him, but the three mountain stages that follow it will give Yates the chance either to regain the lead or to reinforce it, depending on how things stand after Tuesday. The structure of this year's gyro, with two time trials, one short and one longer if not over long, means the tactical equation has always been simple, gain as much time on the specialists as possible. It's a good gap but he can take two minutes out of me in the time trial in one stage, said Yates. I've been fighting since Israel to get a good gap. I'm happy with the gap but it could vanish in 35 kilometers. I don't know if it is enough. His director sportif at Mitchelton Scott, Matt White, put it differently, we're going to take a kicking from. One of the best time trialists in the world. The dimension of that kicking, if kicking it turns out to be, will go a long way to deciding the final outcome of this gyro.